keeping your Odoo always up and running? Bidirectional replication, that is BDR, make it possible. With BDR, multiple database nodes work together seamlessly, ensuring no downtime. Scale your Odoo, improve performance and protect your data with BDR. In the event of failure, quickly restore your system and minimize disruption to your business. So guys, here we have two DB, which is DB1 and DB2, which are in two different servers. Okay, so opening both and first let me show when a contact is created, how it reflects on the other database. So here I'm going to create a new contact. So the name I'm specifying it as David. Okay, so I'm just giving the name and saving it. Okay, so this has been saved right now. Now let's go to the next database and see whether this has been created there. If you click on the contacts over there, you can see David is created here as well. So I'm going to specify the details like company, job position and all. Okay, so I'm giving sales director. And let's give the title as well. So I'm giving it as Mr. and saving it. Now let's see whether this is coming in the DB1. So if you refresh it and see, you can see the data has been saved here. Okay, so going back to contacts in the card view, you can see this David, which you created right now. Now let's move on to the sales module and let's create a new quotation. Okay, so here I'm choosing David, which I created right now and adding the product, which is burger and confirming the quotation. So now if you go to sales of DB2, you can see the quotation, which we created. I'm opening it and I'm going to create the invoice through database too. I am creating a draft invoice here, okay, and I'm confirming it. So after confirmation, we'll do the payment through the database one. Okay, so here you can see the invoice, I'm opening it and doing the payment registration. So creating the payment, you can see the paid ribbon has come. And if you refresh the DB2, the paid ribbon is seen here as well. So now let's go to contacts and create another new contact. Okay. So through DB2, I'm creating a contact named Michelle. Okay, so he's an individual, obviously, and I'm saving it. Okay, so now you can find it here in the DB1. Okay, you can see that person here. So here, as we did before, I'm specifying the name of the company. Okay, and I'll give a title as well. Okay, so I've given a title and I'm saving it. Saved. And if you refresh the page, the details will be auto occupied. Okay. So now go to the sales of DB2 and I'm going to create a quotation using this particular customer. Okay. So I've chosen the person choosing the product cheese and confirming it. Okay. So after the confirmation, if you go to the sales, you can see the quotation created through DB2. I'm going to create an invoice. So click on create draft invoice. Confirm it. Okay. So let's do the payment registration using DB2. So you can see register payment and create payment. So the paid ribbon has come here and it is also found in DB1. Okay. So now let's move on to the sales itself. You have products. Okay. So now let's create a product and try. Okay. So I'm creating a new product and the name of the product, I'm giving it as a desk. Okay, changing the product type to storable product. Okay. And if you just take a look, the on-hand quantity. Okay, the on-hand quantity is right now zero. So let's update it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to update it through DB1. Okay. So if you go to this sales module here, if you go and check the product, you can see the desk is there and the on-hand quantity you open it, you can see there is no on hand quality or no stock on hand is shown there. Okay, so I'm going to update it. So for updating, we should first create a vendor, right? So I'm going to purchase and let's create a new RFQ for a corresponding vendor. Okay, I'm adding the product here, which is desk and the quantity I'm specifying it as 50. Okay, so 50 products I'm buying from a vendor. So I'm receiving the product and validating and completing the procedure. So now if you go to DB1 and check the on-hand quantity, it is 50 units. Okay, so it's because we've, you know, bought it from a vendor through DB2. Okay, so that's how the product, you know, on-hand quantity and all reflects. Now, 
if you go to this purchase module you can see the rfqs which we have created that is also shown here okay so now let's move on to the purchase okay so i'm going to create a new rfq i'm choosing david as the vendor so david is the contact which we created adding the product burger okay and if you refresh it you can find that particular thing here under the rfqs it's not the one i've chosen the wrong one here you can see this okay the rfq which we created with david so i'm receiving the products there and validating it as well okay so now if you go to the rfq which we created in bb1 i mean the rfq which you can find inside the db1 you can see the validation and all is over so you can directly create a bill from the rfq found in db1 okay so don't forget to specify the bill date okay so i'm setting the bill date here and confirming it so the paid label has come if you refresh it you can find it in db2 as well Okay, so if you take the vendor bill, you can see it's paid. So this is how you basically deal with the BDR, which is bidirectional replication. So this BDR is a game changer for ODO deployments, offering enhanced reliability, scalability, and performance. However, it's uh, important to remember that implementing BDR requires careful planning and ongoing management. So by understanding the complexities and benefits of BDR, you can make an informed decision about whether it's the right solution for your Odoo environment. So if you are ready to take your Odoo system to the next level, consider exploring BDR as a powerful option.